Welcome to The Contemplative Life, where we explore topics related to contemplative living in our modern world. We are your hosts, Chris and Christina Roberts. We're glad you joined us. Hello, it's great to be with you. Today, we are talking about the importance of place. And this is a topic inspired by a recent retreat that I attended. In preparation, we were invited to submit a photo of a favorite place. The organizers created a slideshow of the photos, and each of us had three minutes to share about our photo and place that we chose. And it was a beautiful way to learn about each other and to get a glimpse into our worlds and lives, particularly because many of us don't really know each other very well. Interestingly enough, several people shared photos of their backyard and share the oasis that their home offers. Others shared a place they visit each year as part of their family tradition. One person has been going to the same place for 30 years. Someone shared a photo from their alma mater, talking about their college experience and the specialness of that. Another shared a special trip, their hometown, etc. And it was moving to hear all the stories and seeing these special places. And I think that there's something very deeply spiritual about places and our orientation to particular places. Poets write about place. Artists and photographers capture the beauty of place. Families and generations create homes in place. It touches our lives in a deep way. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about how we relate to place as contemplatives. I, I think as you talk about place, I think of physical locations, but I also think of people making up a place. And if I think about some of my most amazing experiences in a place, people have a lot to do with that. And so I'm thinking of my time in Germany. I spent a number of months in Germany and people were so important to the place. And I know there are other places that it's not just the people, but it's the culture, it's the food. I really loved my time in Spain. And I think the delicious paella was a part of that. And the people that I was with were a part of that. And so I think those are some general thoughts that I have around place. But I also think locale is important. And I think that might be what you're referring to. And I think we all have special locations. I if I if And I can break it up in my life. Like my childhood places, my young adult places, and then my places where my children were born. I think we have places that are important to us through the different seasons of our life. And so I think that's paying attention to what is meaningful to you in the, whatever season of life that you're in is a part of that contemplative process. Yeah, I appreciate what you're naming about places also including people, which doesn't surprise me coming from you because you're a very people-oriented person. So I appreciate that. And even going back to this retreat, I think part of the beauty of it was not only were we hearing about the places that were on the photo slideshow, but also there were stories connected to that of this is where my family goes on the weekend is our getaway and it's our place of respite. And so you can picture this person loading up the car with their family to go someplace, or this was a place in college that was special and sharing some significant memories there. And so I can picture this person several years back in college, et cetera. And, and again, to your point, Chris, of I think chronologically, there's different, the childhood, our young adult, our current, when significant things happen, perhaps, like you said, the birth of a child or where we maybe got married or had some significant event happen in our lives. So I, I think there's so many different ways to orient this conversation around place and the significance of it. Yeah. And I, I as we're talking about place, I think Maybe a distinction that comes to mind is places that aren't necessarily home, but are places that are close to home. And I have a number of uh, places that, and, and we might share some of the same places that are close to home that are super meaningful to us. There's a prairie not far away that that is a part of a monastery that is that's super meaningful to me. I have such rich and deep spiritual experiences when I'm walking in the prairie and I'm noticing the different seasons of life. So I think w when I think about place, my obviously my home, I try to create a special place in my home, but I also think about the places that are close to home that are important. 
Yeah, I think that's very relevant. And I think for me too, I definitely have places close to home where I was on a walk the other day with a friend and she invited me to her neighborhood to some marsh behind her house. And I said, oh, well, how often do you walk here? And she's, oh, pretty much every day. It's her oasis. And so hearing that from her made the place even more special to me because I'm like, oh, this is a place that she frequents often. And I also have woods near my house and that was actually the picture that I shared at the retreat was it's a block and a half away from me, but it's this extensive woods where I go almost daily as well, whether it be a short walk or a long walk and just sharing how this particular piece of land has been such a part of my rhythm personally, where a lot of the stress that I carry, I walk it out in the woods or times of gratitude where there's a fresh snowfall on the bare branches and just being able to walk in the woods in that fresh snowfall brings a sense of just gratitude and beauty of the earth, seeing deer and fawn and birds and whatnot, and then sharing that with different people over the years walking in those woods. And it doesn't always have to be this beautiful nature. I remember when I first moved to Madison and had young kids in strollers and I had another mom friend and one of the local malls was our sacred place. And we would go there every month. And in the cold months, we'd have our strollers and just be walking up and down this mall and had wonderful conversations. I'm like, man, if the walls of this mall could talk, there's been a lot of tea shared over the years in, in this place. And yes, it can be these picturesque, beautiful places of nature, but it can also be functional or practical as well, but it's sort of creating these rhythms where this is my place and maybe I share this with this person or this aspect of my life finds connection to this place. Yeah, I appreciate you naming that. And I also appreciate the you sharing about your invitation that you received from your friend. And it makes me think of, I think different people have different relationship to nature. And I have a friend who's a neighbor and one of the obstacles to experiencing some of the beauty around our neighborhood, like we have wonderful walking paths, is being a female and being alone walking in the woods. And I was able to extend an invitation saying, oh, it's so beautiful. It's sad that you haven't experienced the beauty of our woods, the trails that that run alongside the lake, and being able to invite her in to the beauty of our place together, I think was eye-opening for her and a gratitude for where she lives that she didn't actually have before. So I, I like what you're saying about people either extending invitation or receiving an invitation from others to experience place. Yeah, and I think sometimes too, we may have limited access to, again, these places of beauty for various reasons, like one that you're naming or where we happen to live at the time or all of that. And I remember earlier in our marriage, we lived in a really a small quarters, our home, and I had a special chair. We had this really poofy sort of recliner rocking chair. And that was my special place. It was in the corner of our living room. And that's where I would read or reflect. Sometimes I would journal. I had a journaling practice back then. And it was just a corner of my house on this particular chair. And again, places can be quite simple, but it's something significant of this little slice of the earth, whether it be this vast, beautiful lakeside trail or a, a chair can bring that comfort and that sense of groundedness and a place to be tethered to in a, in a very positive way. As we talk about place, I think one of the things that comes to me is, okay, what are the places that are, I have my home, I have my place close to home, but are there places further from home that are significant to me? And I grew up in Texas and I love returning to Texas, but I think one of the places that have special significance to me is something that I haven't visited with my family, but it's a hope of mine to be able to take my children there. And it's the Fort Davis Mountains. I grew up as a kid going and camping in the Fort Davis Mountains. And it's such a special place to me. And I've been there several times in my adult life, but it's something that I haven't taken my children to. It holds such special meaning for me. I love the water that comes from her. It's a spring-fed creek that the water just tastes so distinct. And it's such a special place to me, and it's something that I want my family to experience one day as well. But whenever I think about places that are further away from home, I think there's a number that come to mind, but that's just one story that I thought I would share on the podcast. 
Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I think many of us that don't live in our hometown, there's this sort of nostalgia and a, a really beautiful aspect of returning back to our hometown and having those special places where maybe we used to go to as a kid or an adolescence and then being able to return. Um, and, and oftentimes it's interesting, you you might think of something as big and grandiose because of your childhood memory. And then when you go back, it's maybe smaller than you remembered or a little bit different, or you go back and it's, oh, this is just how I recall this. I remember a few years back, one of my nieces lives in her hometown and she has two cousins that moved and it had been 10 years since they had been back to the hometown. And so she had this big list of the donut shop or their grandfather's house, like all these different places that she wanted to hit over their extended weekend while they, they were there. And it was just this really fun time of reconnecting with, again, some of these familiar places in our childhood hometowns that, and again, to your point, wanting to share them with other people and invite people either back into those times that we shared together previously or to maybe reintroduce new people to those special places. So I think that's really important. And maybe on the flip side too, we have certain places when out-of-town guests visit us that are really special to us. And we want to share those particular places with our out-of-town guests. And I, I think it can go both ways of inviting people into those special spaces. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that comes to mind for me is I, sometimes we outgrow places like something that was significant to us, maybe for a reason, we outgrew them. And then that's where the contemplative process is so helpful. It's, oh, that that didn't do for me what it used to do for me. And so maybe I'm, I'm okay leaving that off of my place as being significant or important. And I, I've had to negotiate, okay, whenever we go to a place, our, usually your time is limited. And so you actually want to maximize. You want to go to the places that are speaking to you or that are significant to you. And so sometimes you have to negotiate. Uh, it actually doesn't do for me what what it used to do for me. And I, I think I've outgrown that place. I recently had the opportunity to visit some relatives in California, and it had been over 20 years since I had been to their house. And so I took one of my kiddos with me for Labor Day weekend. We went just for a visit. And I think it was really interesting because, again, you're experiencing the real lifetime of the trip and with loved ones that are there and experiencing what is now. Of course, there's some nostalgia as to 20 years ago when we visited and where we were at in our lives at the time and how their land has changed, how it's developed, all of that kind of stuff. And then also in those places, reflecting back on previous special places and trips that we've taken with these particular relatives and meeting in different in Chicago or St. Louis, different places that we've been with these different individuals as well. And I think that there's something maybe not quite outgrown, but as we grow and the, the land grows too, the places grow, the, the places change, like places don't stay static. I remember the first time I visited Greece as a teenager and then going back 10 years later and it's, wow, there's been significant change since I've been here last time and repeated going back to places that are further from home that are more of a special trip, but noticing the change in the landscape and the people and the development and whatnot. And so I think in the same way that people change, so do places and being able to mark that. And I think sometimes having extended periods of way and then going back allows us kind of those fresh contemplative spaces to really appreciate and enjoy and to notice those changes, which I think then invites, I think for me, experiencing California with the younger generation, my daughter, she had some cousins there, et cetera, reflecting on my my cousins who are peers of mine. And then the older generation that's there that are aging and we're not sure how long that they're going to be with us and appreciating the time that we have. And it invites nostalgia of, okay, last time I visited, like my aunts and uncle were closer to my age, but I was that age. And what am I going to be like in the next 10, 20 years too? I think it's just this beautiful place being a marker to invite this deeper reflection on our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I think a, a, another thing that, that comes to mind for me is uh, places as ritual, like places that we, in our daily life or our weekly life or whatever the routine is that we experience ritual there. And I know you, you had mentioned the woods, walking in the woods. I think one of the places that I, I go to frequently is our local monastery and I experience prayer there, but I also, I have my spiritual practices that I experience in a place. And so I think places as ritual is an important part of this conversation as well. Yeah, I like that. And recently, one of my places of ritual has been like a bike ride to, we have a little local farmer's market that we've been going to in the summer. And I like to take the scenic route on my bike to get there. It's just a beautiful ride along the lake and into this local park. And so yesterday I had some 
space in my calendar. And so I needed to run some errands. So I'm like, I'm actually going to bike to the plaza to get a couple things that I need. And rather than going the most efficient route, I decided to stick with my ritual of going the scenic route. And I have a practice where I listen to just like particular podcasts that tend to be a little bit more contemplative and thought provoking as I'm along that slower scenic route and just recognizing like I want my bike rides in this season to be more ritualistic than exercise oriented. Exercise is awesome too. And I do have spaces and time for that. But I think sometimes just taking some of our practices and meshing it with certain a posture of how we're showing up in tension, I think can make place a ritual. And my bike has been a special place. And then this particular route has become a really beautiful ritual for me. Yeah. And I'll just say for me, whenever I think about place and ritual, I think prayer beads are so important for me. And sometimes I get away from that whenever I walk or I go to a certain place. And so uh, a lot of times I have to return to those practices as a ritual and, and you're experiencing it without the prayer. And then, oh man, I remember whenever I would experience prayer in this place and I want to return to that. So yeah, that's, it's encouraging me to return to some practices. Hopefully, as you are listening to this, you're inspired to think about some of your favorite places and maybe sharing that with others in the same way that I was inspired by my retreat earlier this month. So thank you so much for a fun conversation around the importance of place. And now is the part of the podcast where we talk about what we are into. So what are we into? I have been into crisp mornings. So I like to take walks in the morning and it is currently September where we're at now. And you could tell that the heat of the summer is dissipated and it's a little bit cooler in the mornings. And so I've just really been enjoying these crisp mornings where the temperature may be in the upper forties, lower fifties, and just cooling the day off a little bit further and making some of these temperatures that we're experiencing leftover temperatures from summer a little bit more bearable in the day. So I've been enjoying crisp morning walks. Lovely. I have been into Greek cuisine. And so I mentioned visiting some relatives in California and my aunt who lives there is puts Martha Stewart to shame. She's like this Greek Martha Stewart and lives off the land and is an incredible cook. And so she sent some Greek treats home with us from the trip and has inspired me to continue to dig into some of my Greek recipes and whatnot. And so I've been bringing on the moussaka and different Greek things and really Although I always enjoy Greek cuisine, there's a fresh oomph lately around that. So that's what I'm into. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, make it a great week. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week. Thank you.